Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch channel on YouTube. Also check out my website, overwatchproject.com if you want. Um, today's video, uh, it's actually nighttime right now, but uh, it's going to be basically a couple of clues and theories about how to escape the reincarnation uh, trick by the light trap um, matrix that, that this reality is, this parasitic reality that we're stuck in. So, um, Wayne Bush, I've talked to him in uh, several emails. He's done a lot of uh, podcasts lately where he's been interviewed. But his website is extremely thorough, and it documents this information in great depth. And it takes a long time to go through all the stuff that he has written or links to or points out in his website. But... Um, Lately, he's done some really good interviews, and um, I heard something in one of them that uh, inspired me to make this video. I said a while ago, and I forget which video, maybe more than one, when I started to realize that the most probable explanation when you look at the totality of information about our reality is that this is some type of parasitic prison environment, and reincarnation is not a good thing. It is a recycling and an imprisonment uh, world that we live in, reality, realm, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this is not good for us. It's probably good for whatever or whoever is feeding off of us or using us for some reason. But it's not good for me uh, or anybody else in this world that... Uh, knows something is just not right. Some people are really invested in this material shithole, but uh, <clears throat> I am not one of them. And uh, if, chances are if you're watching my channel and you agree with uh, the whole trick by the light concept, you're probably not one of them either. Now, uh, back on April 2017 and June, uh, just last month, uh, well, is this still June now? Uh, yeah, still June. But earlier in the month, <clears throat> Wayne did an interview uh, for the Crass Files. Basically, it was called The Game of Life. And uh, 32 minutes into the interview, he points out that he had an email from an NDE experiencer that um, had come across his website and others, probably some other source material. And she was informed, um, for some of you out there, you could say she had gnosis. Uh, she was aware of this whole concept and she had changed her view of reality and then she had an accident and ended up in a hospital or through some illness, went into a coma and had an NDE. During the NDE, she refused to cooperate and didn't take a lot of great effort from, uh, if you listen to the interview, Wayne reads the email and I'll link to his website below. Basically, she just uh, said, I'm not going to be lied to. I'm not going to cooperate, something like that. And she was immediately moved. She immediately traveled away from any kind of entities or light or anything. And she went to a void. And uh, she commented that the nurse later told her that when she went into her room, she would feel a great sense of peace or harmony or something. And she said she felt really at peace in this void away from any kind of influence now um, I said a while ago in some video that it would be awesome if people did not enter into an NDE come back and just tell us how they went along for the ride if they were able to interrogate the entities interrogate the uh, um, deceased relatives or whatever that they encounter and find out what the hell is really going on instead of just accepting what they're being told or being um, overwhelmed by some euphoric light of love, etc. You know, if they would just not comply and see what happens. Well, this is our first glimpse at what that may look like. And unfortunately, it's only one case. But uh, like I said, Wayne has done a lot of uh, video interviews and a lot of other... Uh, interviews uh, all, all throughout this month and I highly recommend that you listen to them so far I've been listening and they were all fascinating on his website he has a solutions page 
and I'm just going to play for you a couple of parts of it. This is a quote here from William Bullman. A lot of people know who you, who that is. He's an out of body experiencer, and he's written several books. But uh, listen to what he said about um, um, basically about what what he plans to do when he finally uh, when his body finally dies for good. Many people are relieved and overjoyed to discover that they really do continue to exist after death and, as a result, gladly accept the first non-physical reality they experience as their new spiritual home. However, there is one very serious problem with this comforting scenario that few are aware of and no one addresses. You have just accepted and adapted to a thought consensus environment on the astral plane. You have just accepted a reflection of spirit instead of the true essence of it. You have done what billions have done before you. You have merged your consciousness with a non-physical reality far from your true spiritual home. By doing so you essentially guarantee the continuation of your form-based existence and your reincarnation. The end result is that most people accept the denser spiritual realities of the astral plane as their new home. They settle for an adapt to the physical-like areas of the astral plane because these environments are familiar and comfortable. Thus they chain themselves to the astral realms of form and substance, and the ancient cycle of rebirth is maintained and assured. I am often asked what I will do when I take my final breath. This is a critically important question that too few people ask themselves these days. My answer is this. I will demand to experience my higher self, my spiritual essence. I am not content to simply go to the light. I am not content to accept past acquaintances and comfortable surroundings as my new reality. In fact, I am not content to settle for any form-based reality as my spiritual home. I absolutely know there is so much more available beyond the realms of form. There exist dimensions of magnificent living light simply waiting for us. All we need do is awaken and accept the reality. Two powerful truths are apparent. First, all form is but a reflection of pure spirit. Second, we are not helpless victims of an external force that dictates or directs our reality and our lives. We are bestowed with the power of free will and the ability to take spiritual action. Why would you settle for a pale reflection of reality when the pure realms of spirit are always present? Out of body experiencer and researcher, William Bowman. Um, that is a good quote. Um, and pretty much uh, what that woman did that uh, Wayne uh, got an email from. Um, like I said, you should check out his website and uh, you could read more of his thoughts on solutions. But the last uh, interviews that he's done throughout June are very informative. And he has so much information. The guy has accumulated a lot of info on this subject. Now, um, another thing I wanted to talk to you about is some of the comments I've gotten recently. Um, in my last video, I had a few in-depth comments, and I wanted to give my thoughts about what some people have said here. Um, I get a lot of comments from Unplug the Matrix. He has um, a lot of OBE experience, and um, he had uh, he has some really interesting accounts that he shared in the past um, and uh, he has uh, made a comment here uh, that I get from some people and I've seen in other videos uh, I just want you to we'll, we'll just play it here so you can uh, we'll go over what he said and then I'll respond I get what you're trying to say man but the truth is no one created us there is only one consciousness in existence and we're all it that consciousness has simply split itself into billions of different points of view. And that's what we are. I've had out-of-body experiences where I've been in two places at once. So I understand how this happens. If I were to be in two places at once and then give the other me its own free will and self-identity, there would then be two of us. So that is how we came to be. We were not created by some superior being. 
And by the way, just who is it that was so much of a threat to that we have to be imprisoned in this shit hole of a world? Like I said, there is only one consciousness and we are all it. Outside of the physical world, we cannot hurt each other. We are all indestructible. We could fight to the death all day long and we wouldn't be able to hurt each other. So who is it that we pose a threat to? In my experience, the only thing that we are a danger to is a group of nefarious beings that want to keep us under control because they feed off of our negative energy. They are the abominations, not us. But even so, in the afterlife, we can't hurt them and they can't hurt us. So you're going to have to do better than saying we're here because we're dangerous. Think about it, this way when they want to lure us in after death, they don't use horrible negative energy to do it. They use love. But if we wanted to attract them, we would have to use the exact opposite. They are attracted to fear and misery and death and destruction. They're attracted to it like vultures are attracted to roadkill. I think that says a lot about them and upon that I rest my case as to who the bad guys really are in all of this. Oh, and you mentioned Howard Storm's NDE. I heard his story over a decade ago. I have been in similar situations during out-of-body experiences. But I'm able to drive dark entities away from me. I can't actually hurt them nor can they hurt me but I can repel them. And another thing, they are always the aggressors, not me. I never go over there hoping to start a fight with someone. But they don't seem to have any problems starting one with me. Just more evidence that they are the bad guys, not us. And I'm not the only person who has had to deal with them. A lot of people who have OBEs run into them. They are the ones making all the aggressive moves. And for what? Because they're afraid we will harm them. I know from experience that we can't. So I'm not buying that story. And that's a response because I made a video pondering the question because, okay, so the way I look at it is this. Uh, there's a basic uh, point of, of uh, reality that we can understand if you, if you take a look, at, and this is crucial, the totality of the information available. And as more information comes in that totality that gets bigger and bigger i learn new things almost every day that blow my mind but so far these these new pieces of information have not contradicted the theory that this is some sort of negative reincarnation trap matrix prison world but the puzzle just keeps getting a little bit bigger but Outside of that basic concept, everything else we're just kind of guessing at. Or some people just kind of like embellish on ancient texts and come up with uh, Anunnaki aliens here for gold. But this is all like, some of it is created out of fantasy. Some of it is just, there's just no direct source of information to support a lot of these people. Have a model of reality. Uh, you get models of reality from... From philosophers, from uh, from religious people, from atheists, from materialist scientists, they have their models of reality. It, what I've learned to do, and what I try to tell people to do, is everybody's model of reality is built on some sort of source information. If you can extract, you know, and do your own research and look at the source information, sometimes you can. You know, you can, all these people have half truths. They have information that they sourced their model on, and then they have information they've intentionally ignored, or they are ignorant of, and they built their they build their whole worldview on whatever sources they're relying on. But these sources can all be pulled out. You can extract them and investigate and come up with a at least a big picture, and then. Yeah, we. I was toying around with an idea in my last video of what if we're like, what if we're like the Terminators, you know, like we were created by something and that that something or some beings or whatever entities, demigods, gods, whatever, that created us, um, simply 
thinks we're too powerful. I mean, essentially, the Sumerian texts, that's what they actually say. You know, Enlil was kind of angry that Enki made humans too with too much god essence or something. He wanted to um, extinguish us. Um, but uh, those are just ancient texts, and we're just kind of guessing that, uh, you know, and I was just toss tossing around an idea. But Unplug the Matrix mentioned this whole oneness thing. Now, the whole problem is that um, I've heard this from many people, and even from NDE years and OB years, they kind of like tell you what they saw and then they interpret it. Okay, they tell you what they witnessed, what they experienced, and then they also add their interpretation. But their interpretations don't always hold up when you take a look at the totality of data available. This whole concept of oneness, you have to understand, or that there's only one consciousness. I, I Possibly there's only one source that emanated all consciousness. But we're not all one. We're clearly all, we are clearly individualized. And, and not because we have a different point of view, but because we're actually just different beings. And yes, you can still meet yourself in a different dimensional state, a higher dimensional state than this one, because you have to remember, once end of years always, uh, there's, a, there's a general uh, huge amount of data about NDEs. And the NDEs are the ones with verifiable data, more than OBEs. But um, they all say that time here is like an illusion. This linear time that we experience moment to moment is like part of the trap here. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's weird, but they say that things in these NDE states don't happen necessarily in a linear fashion. Well, if you would remove linear time, you could meet... Uh, another you that's in a different time because linear time becomes irrelevant it's still the same person but in a different time and, and from their point of view from your point of view in a different point of view during a different point in time but um I, I I look at it like this. If you want to use the as above so below concept of things, we sort of mimic things in our world here that probably is a pale, shadowy uh, likeness of what reality is in these higher realms. When you have your phone in your hand or your computer connected to the Internet, um, you have access to the whole Internet. When people are in an NDE or OBE state, they seem to have access to everything in the universe, in, in a multiverse, in an omniverse. Some people, um, you know, describe that feeling of connectedness, being able to uh, obviously telepathy, uh, communicate non-verbally, uh, send bundles of information or look at something and become almost one with it in um, understanding it. This is all stuff that happens uh, that you have to remember a person with amnesia, a spirit that has been imprisoned in a human body, suddenly freed but still suffering from its imprisonment and amnesia and that hasn't gotten itself totally together and it's finally feeling a euphoric freedom like they've never had before and a connection to everything. If your computer is connected to the internet, your, your computer is not the internet, but it is at the same time one with the internet. It has access to everything out there if you know where to go or how to find it. When people describe their experiences, it's like that. They're like describing this thing where they finally are plugged in. Um, I find no... Uh, I find... Uh, People interpreting this, there is only one consciousness in existence concept in a lot of places, but they don't support that with um, with data or source evidence that or information that you know points that out. What what he does here in his own comment is point out other entities that attack, that can be repelled, um, that they're they're the abominations. Well, if 
if this were true, that would mean that they are him. You know, uh, you know. It it doesn't it doesn't flow. It doesn't it doesn't fit the data. But what does fit the data is that it's almost like there's only one consciousness. Just like it's almost like every computer in the world connected to the internet is one computer. Uh, yet they're all individual units. And that's how I see things. I disagree with this concept. But I completely agree with I may be wrong about that. You know, the, my last theory, my last video. It was just a what if piece and I wasn't taking it that seriously. Uh, but I, I get what he's saying. I just wanted to reply to him in depth here. <clears throat> now you have um, another interesting comment from this um, uh, Kyle Andrews. And I just wanted to play that so um, we could um, hear his uh, view on things, which was pretty interesting. What's interesting is that whatever was behind this hell doesn't use its own power source to propel this machine we call reality. As you very well know, we collapse the wave function and produce this reality. However, the code behind it appears to dictate the subsequent result if that makes sense. Think of it like a computer code which Professor James Gates has discovered. And just like a computer, the binary code is at the heart of the program, but the user interface is what is perceived similar to the movie that Matrix. So, okay, this is a computer simulation of which we are forced as slaves to interpret the code and render the user interface. In other words, we are not experiencing reality, but are forced and enslaved to produce it. So if we are forced to render this reality based on something, someone else's source code, then the ultimate end goal is the final outcome of the program when it is all said and done. And like many Gnostics had stated, the end goal is the merging with the Demiurge. This is the outcome of the program once fully completed. We are enslaved to interpret and render the code in its Demiurge image to eventually produce a reality which melts itself with the very creator of the code. Furthermore, science has revealed what I call the key discoveries. Number one, this is a holographic reality. Number two, there is a source code at the base of all of this. Number three, we are forced to bring about reality, wave function collapse. It should be obvious then that we are consciousness slaves whose only purpose is to interpret code and render the user interface. L by doing so we are propelling us to a technological equivalent of TH. E very source of the code known as the Demiurge. So where are we at? Well, right now we have Oculus glasses, 4K TVS, holograms, Think Tupac, Elvis, MJ and other dead celebs whose likeness was recreated on stage, AI robots, etc. So where we are going should be obvious that we are slaves which are propelling and deciphering the code to produce a technological reality on par with the architect itself. Once we reach a point of technological equivalency with the Demiurge, we have successfully guaranteed our enslavement. The trick of the light is due to the fact that, whatever the Demiurge is, needs a constant supply of slaves to keep interpreting and rendering the code. We are getting closer to the point of genuine real-world 3D reality, indistinguishable holograms, and self-thinking AI. Wait, isn't that exactly what reality is? You get it? We are hanging ourselves with the very rope provided to us by the Demiurge, whatever he, that is. The metaphor of the creation myth. Look at the two keys in Genesis. This monster god, Jehovah, Demiurge only had two edicts. Be fruitful and multiply, create more slaves, and subdue the earth, progress creation. However, there was only one thing not to do. Don't eat, consume, learn, understand, of the tree, source, of the knowledge, gnosis, understanding, of good and evil. Duality. In other words, just make more slaves, keep working, propelling this world, reality, and do not question. 
Well, as we know our metaphoric parents Adam and Eve did in fact eat from the tree and guess what the Demiurge, Jehovah, God did? Absolutely nothing different. After the allegorical, all Jehovah repeat thee the same two edicts above. When he said that the woman would receive pain in childbirth, and man would work by the sweat of his brow. In other words, nothing changed. Same edict of birth and work are better yet reincarnate enslavement and progress creation. There was nothing different between the edicts before and after the fall. The only thing that changed was the tone of the Demiurge regarding his plan. As for why would Source allow this? Well, that is because you are God, Source. So the question is why do you, we allow this? Well, that's a different take on the same data that, uh, you know, is available. And it's, you know, interesting because what, he, what he's basically saying is uh, that all this AI and technology is being used to make something that could eventually replace, you know, merge us into the slave environment even deeper or, or replace us completely. I, I'm not sure exactly what the outcome would be, but um, it's not a good thing. That's for sure. Um, this this world is really effed up. And, and no matter how deep uh, we go to try to understand it, it's so easy to get thrown, thrown off track, right? When I first started, uh, I was heavily indoctrinated, having been raised and gone 12, to, through from kindergarten to, to 12th grade in Catholic school and just having all that Christianity programmed into me, it took a lot of, you know, you, you, nobody wants to admit to themselves that they spent their whole life believing on something that was had errors and that you tried to defend it and tried to rationalize around it. Uh, it's the same thing atheists do. They have a system of non-belief and... Uh, if you show them a verified NDE out of body experience, even with uh, multiple cases, doctors, nurses verifying what the patient said as correct information, no way that the person can know what happened in the room, etc. It's the same thing. It's it's very dogmatic. There's no breaking that. People will just get stuck. Let me just point out something about my experience having read the entire Bible cover to cover multiple times and then finally realizing the simple trick to uh, really understanding what the heck was going on was by simply reading what the Bible actually said. Um, most people spend all their time trying to interpret what is, um, you know, trying to make whatever is said fit their dogmatic sect of Christianity or whatever religion you're looking working from but since I grew up in the Christian uh, world uh, I'll just use my uh, birth religion as an example um, so a lot of Christian truthers out there and they have these YouTube videos where they talk about the Saturn cube matrix the tesseract the uh, symbology of the cube and um, I'm sure if you searched YouTube or went on their blogs, you would be able to find tons of information about the satanic cube. But here's the thing. And, uh, you know, hard-pressed to find any Christian that has a, a reasonable explanation for this. The Bible literally ends with them living in a cube. Now, in case you didn't know that, this is absolutely 100% true. The Bible, basically, uh, if you read it cover to cover, um, ends with a 1,400-mile cube. And it's, it's so bizarre because you actually have people that have made websites like this one where they, they the, to them, this is a good thing. This guy's website here, tourofheaven.com, uh, explains the New Jerusalem you know, and how it will be, and basically, this is this is this is going to be heaven. Now, think about this. You know, this is what we're dealing with. You you can't um, 
just give people information. And there's all sorts of barriers, right? The When it comes to something like knowledge, uh, people want to call it gnosis or whatever. It's just knowledge, okay? When it comes to a personal understanding of reality, it has to be personal. You can't go out and tell people, look, see this here, look at, let me package all the information up. My videos, I gotta admit, all my latest videos and newer videos, these are for people that already understand the concepts of the reincarnation or trick by the light thing. I don't expect to change anybody's minds. I get really stupid comments from, from people that are basically being assholes sometimes. They don't understand what I'm saying. They don't do the research. I put a lot of effort in my videos to provide the source material. Like this website here, I'll link to it in the description section below. I li I'll link to every tab here. Usually, every video I make has a ton of links in the description section. The source material I use to make my commentary about the source material. Um, just look at how many apocalyptic events to just list it here on Wikipedia. But you know, they're not, they don't have all of them here. There are more. All these times. Now, if you went on YouTube right now and you narrowed your search down to just the last year and you just searched for end times and you look at all the fucking videos, right? Okay. How many videos out there? This is it. It's going to be this, uh, you know, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's been 2,000 years. Look at this list. These people were all sure that the end of the world, and now they go into the future dates here. 2020, 2021, 2026, 2060. The year 11,120. Come on. Come on. You know what they say about insane people, right? They do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, even though they keep getting the same result. This is supposed to be heaven. We're, we are spirits that not only are trapped in physical bodies, our brains are specifically designed to make it very very difficult you have to tame your ego you have to be willing to admit you're wrong when you come across new information it is a you have to be able to look at the world in in a in a negative way i guess you could say seeing that it's a prison and that there's this is not a learning experience. So, I get comment. I got a comment. One guy wrote that he can't take me seriously because of an intro I used in one of my videos that he said was comic bookish. But I got to tell you, comic books are a great source of esoteric knowledge because um, I don't. I forget who said this, but it's like art is the lie that shows you truth. They put, our subconscious is bleeding out the truth all over the place. Artists, storytellers, people that wrote myths in the past, um, the, these come from our imagination, which is fed to our subconscious. Our subconscious knows the truth. But we are trapped. Our brains feed off of our conscious mind. Our, our spirit itself is split into a duality with itself making us fucking insane. Mark Passio once uh, said, actually he says this in a lot of his lectures, if you ever listen to any of his lectures, that it's the information that's important. It's the information, not the tone of his voice, not what he looks like, not if his hair is messed up, not my video intros, not the sound of my voice, not if I didn't, if I'm not a great speaker, or I just come on here and I wing it, I don't have any scripts. None of that's important. If you want to know the truth about reality, if you want to know how not to get reincarnated again, you have to have 
a personal knowledge, first of all, of all the totality of all this information, and you have to be willing to act. Someday, at some point, your body, your brain will shut down. My body and brain will shut down. I could go out of my house, something bad happens, an accident or something, and it could be tomorrow or it could be uh, 40 years from now. Who knows? Eventually it'll happen though, right? When that happens, from now until then, I plan on continuing to learn, continuing to expand my knowledge so that I can be as prepared as possible. That woman, all she did was basically read Trick by the Light, maybe some other stuff, that had the uh, near-death experience, and she was able to quickly gain control of it. Uh, Unplugged the Matrix says that basically he can, um, you know, he can at will repel, which is, I, be I believe it, because... And the ears, uh, you know, you're, you are an immortal, non-physical being. You're not, not even, you shouldn't even think of your spirit as being human. Human is just a shell that you happen to be in right now. When you're out of your body, it's time to become that being of light that you are, and just express your individuality and your your ownership of your own spirit. And, and not comply to any trickery, any lies, any attachments. You you want to regain your complete self, like Bowman said. That's that's my first uh, attempt here at discussing this. And I don't know if what do you think. One other last thing I'd like to say is, um, I happen to have a Vedic astrology reading from uh, Heidi Vandenberg. She is uh, she has a YouTube channel called Channel 27. She's been on uh, League Project a couple times. That's where I originally saw her, and she gave me a reading. And I have to tell you that uh, I was amazed. I had done research about Vedic astrology before. <clears throat> there is a YouTube video where basically um, I think it's a uh, is it Sam Harris, uh, one of the uh, professional atheist mega pseudo skeptics out there, had uh, some Vedic astrologer um, that he put to the test, and the guy had like a seventy five percent accuracy rate. You can you can probably find his uh, video out there if you search. Um, let me see if I can find it for you. It is hilarious to watch this, and you wonder how people can still not understand what's uh, going on. Um, was it Sam Harris? Let's see here. Man, oh man, I know I, I can't I can't remember. If I find it, I'll put it in the link description below. It's it's hilarious. Um, it's from a documentary that they made or something. I, I, it may not have been Sam Harris. It could have been somebody else. I, I don't remember right now. But uh, Vedic astrology. So this um, Heidi here, she gives me a reading, and and she all she knows never talked to her before. All she knows is my birthday and some other basic information not nothing else really and she t she reads off this chart thing and she's telling me things about my my some of my traits that she could possibly know there's no way especially some of the um personality traits that are qu quite she was very specific in some things and i was like blown away she's very good at what she does um, it's just interesting how all this stuff plays out, how people are told to avoid, you know, people like her because, because of their <clears throat> dogma, 
either they have a system of non-belief where they refuse to accept anything outside the material realm or they are they are of a fear-based tyrannical religion that forbids knowledge and the exploration of personal knowledge it is uh, really bizarre uh, the people that want to live in this box eventually look at that isn't that going to be wonderful that's that's heaven yay um i gotta find that video i know i put it somewhere oh man i bet you it's in one of my playlists let me just let me just you guys if you want to stick around long enough huh let me just try to see it find it here i know i put it um in a playlist because when i found it it was hilarious um man oh man where could it be you know the other thing is um i don't sell anything on my website or my youtube channel i don't promote any products i'm not advertising for any money i don't ask for donations no patreon no nothing i do this is strictly volunteer work so does wayne by the way I don't think this guy has asked for anything. He doesn't sell anything on his website. And um, I like it that way. It, it, it gives you a sense of freedom when you're not doing anything for any other reason than you're honestly trying to explore reality and try to understand what's going on um, in the world. I wonder if I put in The Real Matrix. Uh, this is a great playlist I have. The Real Matrix uh, playlist it's huge now 275 videos and counting I have put so many videos on here uh, all about the subject I cover it's like my main playlist for reincarnation trap UFOs everything links together once you um, once you uh, start looking at all the information um. Damn it. Let me see here. <sighs> yeah, some of you guys are probably going to click off by now. But I'm determined to find this video now. I know I had it. I put it, saved it somewhere. I'm going to pause the video for a second. See if I can find it. Okay. I found it. So it's a... This is the full version of video. It was Michael Shermer. He's like a professional skeptic. Which means... He has a conditions of what he won't believe. No matter what the evidence is. This is an, an astrologer, a Vedic astrologer, that he, you know, documented. And <laughs> when you watch this, it's embarrassing for Shermer. It's absolutely embarrassing. Um, these people are not interested in the truth. On my website, I have a lot of links, but there's this section for Skeptology. And uh, there's some good stuff in here about, you know, skeptics in general. They are just interested in maintaining the, you know, confines of the worldview that they want you to have. They're professionals at debunking. They're professional debunkers. Not interested in debunking actual things that are not true. They're going to tell you what truth is. They're going to define it for you. This is just the opposite side of the coin, folks. But I'll link to this, too, in case you want to watch it. Well, I think this has gone on long enough. Uh, basically, um, the I put the most important thing at the beginning of my video, which was the title, How to Escape the Matrix, basically. And I just suggest that you listen to these last podcasts, especially uh, the one from June uh, 10th, where um, he reads the email. He does it again in some of the later interviews from the end of the year. And um, check out uh, Wayne Bush's website, Trick by the Light, and uh, look at the in-depth uh, section on solutions, which uh, has a lot of information on it. 
Okay, um, I haven't done a video in a while, and I think I ran a little long on this one. Hope you don't mind. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.